Hey there, guys. Um, oh, I hate that. I think you should use this like the introduction to the first episode. Blah, 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 blah. Don't like it. Don't like it. It's 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 too uh, it's too let's play. You know, it's like, hey there, guys. Welcome to let's play this podcast. <laughs> That should be the intro to the t um, to the show now. Actually, yeah, we'll keep it as that. So, um, <laughs> this is the podcast for Gaming by Numbers, the offshoot of UK by Numbers. Yeah, hello. I'm, so, I'm Alessandro Santino. I'm the editor of um, UK by Numbers. And joining me today is Jamie, who's, I'm guessing, the editor of Gaming by Numbers. You're guessing. I'm I don't guessing. Know who works for me. I don't That's know. Who works with. I don't work You're not... For you're not my supervisor. It not work for you anymore. It, um, so this podcast is kind of like a discussion piece about news of the week to do with gaming, obviously. And uh, just other stuff that's in the ga uh, gaming world that we really feel like we should bring up. So the uh, way that it was normally structured is that we'll have around 10 news pieces and a couple of discussion pieces um, each week. But, but I think you'll find this week there's nothing that's actually happened. No news at all besides some very small stuff that we're just going to cover real quick at the beginning. And a game I think everybody forgot about. Yep. <laughs> uh, bonus points to ever guess is that. And so we're going to start off the uh, thing every time by saying, what have we been playing recently? And uh, so what do, you, what do you think about it? So, aside what from what have you been playing? Well, I think this week I Black Friday I picked I picked up a number of games. I pitched picked up the Watchdog to Collector's Edition with a statue for thirty pounds. That's, uh, that's a bit cheap for like a game that's like a week old. A week old, yeah. I had vouchers. Apparently, I lost my game's reward card, and it had like forty quid's worth of like credit on there from when the Xbox came out. Okay, so, um, so but yeah, I've been playing Watch Dogs too, enjoying that a lot more than the first one. Um, I've also been redoing the Mass Effect trilogy on the Xbox One now that they're all backwards compatible. Uh, yeah, that's uh, really uh, interesting. How is it? How do they run? Like, do they run really good? Do they run better? Or is it just like playing? It runs the better than the Assassin's Creed 2 um, ports. That's a, discussion, <laughs> that's a discussion for another time. <laughs> but yeah, surprisingly, actually, it works very well. It's good that the fact that they've got all the DLC support as well. So. Yeah, it's actually really enjoyable, and especially you can pick up all three games and the DLC for about forty pounds now. And I'd highly recommend it to anybody who's interested in Andromeda or even in just three generally really good games. They're really good value for money, and now they're backwards compatible. You can enjoy them on your Xbox One. Yeah, well, um, I've also picked up uh, I picked up Watch Dogs Two for the PS4. Uh, thinking of actually trading in again the uh, again the PC version down the line though, just for Ease of, ease of access, and I, I agree with you. I think it's way better than the first one. Lots, but lots more fun. Um, not really say I'm that fond of the story. Honestly. Yeah, but I, I don't think Ubisoft's stories have been that good for a while. But I, that's the I think it's just the gameplay that you kind of need to focus on with Ubisoft's titles. Yeah. I mean, it, ever since uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the storyline hasn't been the best. Yeah, I, I think was it Ubisoft who came out this week and said um, in future narrative is not going to be their sh focus. Oh, what was it they said? It's like, narrative's not going to be their focus. They're going to be focusing on gameplay mechanics. Yeah, or... I, I think it's because of like, all the glitches and stuff that's been happening with like a lot of their new titles. Uh, Watch Dogs, surprisingly glitch-free, apart from yeah. the fact the multiplayer was down for the first week. which kind of and, it's st and it's still broken as it's, of 8pm Sunday. It has an 8pm Sunday. But hopefully, uh, by the time it goes up, this could be, uh, yeah. could be fixed. So, shall we move on to the news? All the four pieces of news that we've desperately try to scrape together because <laughs> nothing's happened this week at all. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we can uh, do that. So let's start with uh, the game that I'm sure many of us wanted to forget uh, that existed. Uh, or some people might actually have been a fan of and still liked it regarding the huge controversy. I'm of course talking about No Man's Sky, the worldwide hype phenomenon. Phenomenon? Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Worldwide hype thing. That obviously crashed and burned horribly and left a lot of people feeling quite annoyed based on yeah. what they promised and what they received. And for, I think, several months now, Sean Murray and the rest of No Man's Sky's yeah. team has been very quiet about what's going on. But it wasn't the last tweet they had there. A cat got hacked and it said, No Man's Sky was a mistake. Yeah, so no one knows if that was like an actual hacking thing or was it like a disgruntled employee 
the point is, is that the people weren't very happy with it. But finally, as of today, yeah, of the twenty um, seventh of uh, November, they like they released what I'm assuming was going to be the day one patch. But four months later, I mean, I mean, it's two gigabytes in size, and Sean Murray said um, it won't be our big. It won't be our biggest update, but it's the start of something. This update will be the first small step in a longer journey. We hope you can join us. Um, yeah, so that's what they've said. Um, the files comes in at about 2 gigabytes. Uh, 2.7. 2.7 gigabytes. Um, it's free, so that's, that's one, something. That's one thing, I mean. But yeah. Did anyone um, actually buy it if it was paid? <laughs> I'm not sure, okay, really. So, uh, what's actually in this update is, is it's not like a bunch of bug fixes or. Um... Well, I think that's included some of it. I think some of the repetitive. I think they've tried to add variety to the um, planets. I'm not yeah. sure if that's come true yet, but that's what's rumored to be. Yeah, I think they might have tweaked the algorithm to make it like. like yeah. Because that, like, just do a quickly segue, uh, segue off it. So, you've, you you played No Man's Sky. I, I played No Man's Sky. I played it. I bought it on launch day. Mm. I played it for about. A day, and then I traded it in and got. I only lost two pounds because I just didn't like it at all. I think consider I like... it was undersold, and I'm very disappointed that it didn't have PSVR support because I think PSVR support would have saved that game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it would have it would have made it a lot more fun. Even even like monotonous stuff in VR is still pretty yeah pretty fun and fun to do. But I was from reading from the actual website, basically what the DL, um, update includes says. You can now recruit alien life forms to develop, to develop your technology, set up a farm to grow your own resources, set up save points and waypoints, and buy huge interstellar frigates for storing all your kit. As expected, you can also build bases on your own planets, and there are now creative and survival modes for changing the emphasis on the game. So it looks like, like you said, it's basically what we were promised originally, but at the end of November. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, send across to you the uh, official No Man's Sky. Uh, it's got, yeah, it's got it's got like, got a list of the update here that we can just quickly run through. Uh, for those that are listening that still play No Man's Sky, uh, you guys had dedication, and uh, I wish it could be more like you. Uh, so it seems like there's um, new game modes. Yeah. So there's the standard normal mode. There's creative mode, which is I'm assuming like every game's creative mode, unlimited resources. <laughs> And survival mode, which sounds like hard mode. Yeah. Okay. I mean, to be fair, if the creative mode is not like Fallout 4, when there's pretty much no point to it, apart from, you know what I mean, just building it. Yeah. It might actually make me buy the game again. If I can get it for like 20 quid. Yeah, I think, I think it's like... Because I do like my... I don't like Minecraft visual fidelity. That's what puts me off that game. But I do like the idea of base building on the planet to survive. And I generally think if creating a base has an actual purpose other than just scavenging resources or landing your ship, I generally think this might actually be the get the game's saving point. Yeah, I, I think that could definitely be it. And I hope that the updates add the other... I, no one's found the other two endings, right? There was, but he said there was three completely different paths you could take in the game. Yeah, but in... Again, he also said there was multiplayer in the game, so... Yeah, well, the point is, is that there is, um, there is yeah. going to be two... Uh, Has uh, anybody two made it to the centre of the galaxy yet? Yeah, yeah, a lot of I mean, people, a lot universe, of people, the universe, yeah, even. Yeah, a lot of people did on day one. And what happens is, uh, spoilers, uh, is it then sends you fly to a new galaxy, basically, and you start all up over again, and you do the same thing. It's like New Game Plus without any of the benefits of New Game Plus. So, question then... Is it too little, too late? I'm going to say yes. I think this game has... I think well, I think this update would have saved the game, but I think the fact that Sean Murray and, no, and Hello Games stayed quiet for so long and haven't addressed any of the fan criticisms has basically burnt them, and I don't think anyone will be buying this game anytime soon. I think if they re like almost if they drop the price to something like 20, I think it'll be enticing more people because at the end of the day this is an indie game that because of hype was able to be sold at a full $60 or 50 pound. Question, will it be on PlayStation Plus? Will that be the savior of this game? People will get it for free on PlayStation Plus in a month or so when the updates had time to 
be integrated. I would be very surprised if that is on um, PlayStation Plus. But that could increase the user base again, couldn't it? Yeah, but people feel burnt. If we go based on current PlayStation Plus trends, though, it won't turn up to like mid next year at best, like a year after the games come out. It might though. I mean, that's that's a possible thing. Uh, but so, yeah. yeah, if we get just to go through further into base building, you can construct your shelters and do farming to uh, farm more resources. This reminds. Have you ever played um on PC? It's called Osiris New Dawn when your ship crashes on the planet. Um, yes. It reminds me a lot of that, where... I wasn't a huge got... fan. I wasn't a huge fan of, Os of Osiris. Uh, I um... liked Osiris, considering it's still very early development. Yeah, I mean, that's, but... that was probably my complaint with it, is that... Obviously... A lot of what um, No Man's Sky is doing reminds me of that. The fact that you've got to build shelters to protect you from the weather, oxygen, etc., etc. It, it does feel like one game inspired the other. Most yeah. Um... Obviously, more freighters, so it looks like there's some more ship updates for, like, shipping all the stuff that you're uh, building and stuff. New resources oh. and technology, so that's more stuff for you to uh, overload your uh, inventory with. <laughs> the user interface has been uh, improved to accommodate the stress of survival mode, where a small inconvenience could be the difference between life and death. So there's now quick menus to charge mining beans and add stuff to stuff, you know. Really take away the monotony of opening the menu, going into it, holding the button. Yeah. So that's I mean, cool. I think also, I don't, I don't, the actual list at the bottom is massive and it will take us forever. But it does seem to be a general, um, how would you even say, attention to detail. Like There seems to be a lot of stuff that you yeah. might get smaller days. I things mean, from added alarms, explosions, more yeah. building props. On the back end, it also seems like they've added some optimization, so minimum spec PCs can run it better. Yeah, which is really good because I run a 780i and I played it on PC, and it was it was it had quite a lot of judder on launch. Yeah, I think. But yeah, so... I totally agree. I think though, I would have personally liked to see some of these smaller updates maybe come out August September time just to show that they are still supporting the game because. I consider both of us very into gaming, but even we have to admit, kind of thought they they just forgot about this game. Well, I mean, to, to had kind of, nothing to kind of close on it. Sean Murray kind of became like the current generation Peter Molyneux, <laughs> in the way that he overpromised, you know. So uh, yeah, it's just uh, so. Uh, um... He does that video on YouTube, isn't it? It was yeah. called Sean Murray Live for two hours. Yeah, it's pretty. It's um, the the fans really ran, uh, ran with it. Well. Fans, fans of video games ran with it and really tore him a new one. But yeah, so final thoughts on the uh, on the update. Will you be will you be rebuying the game to try the update, or will you be waiting for um, uh, more content? I'm probably gonna. But I know for a fact that my sister's bought it for my nephew for Christmas because he likes this kind of Minecraft games. He's got a bit bored of Minecraft. So been here. And so I think I might give it a, like I might have a look at it. Um, but again. It see if there's any value to this because the problem with the original game was there wasn't any objective really, and base building's great, but there's got to be for me at least it's got to be something that I'm working towards, not just building bases for the fun of it. Yeah, I mean, you, what about you? Yeah, I, I definitely I, I want more gameplay. I I almost want some like structured missions. Like a a good example of a game that was pure random generation but recently had missions is um, I'm not not Hello Neighbor um. Ah, like, uh, one sec. I've, I've got to get up on Steam. We Happy Few. Oh, We Happy Few. That is that the game when everyone's really sad and stuff? Yeah, like, it's really Bioshock inspired. Um, it's like, they used to just have random generation, everything's done that. But in the newest updates, they like added missions and people to talk to and just really fleshed out the game a lot more. Nice, and, no. I, I feel, and so I feel like that's something No Man's Sky can do. And it is it is doable. It has been anyway, a large open world game let's... before. Let's move on to our next point. Yeah, we'll move got... on to the next point right now, which is sales. Sales everywhere. It's Black Friday, obviously. Um, in America, I think it's kind of like that South Park episode where you try to get PS4s and Xbox Ones. In England, I don't think anybody... We both live in Birmingham. I don't think anybody really cared. But we had... We've had... In, in um, yeah. America's defense, we have had some pretty bad Black Fridays in the past, though, of like, people getting trampled. And it's just obviously... But with Amazon, why would you do that? Exactly. I bought, I bought some new clothes from um, uh, from Black Friday. I just ordered them. But yeah, 
Um, we'll wait to a quick one. There's obviously the Steam Winter Sale. Have, what have you picked up in the last week? I know we both picked up some games. I was wondering what you've picked up. Um, obviously, I, I thought I'd try out uh, Dishonored 2 and Titanfall. Yeah, I picked up Titanfall 2 for Xbox One and Dishonored 2, both for 20 quid in um, H&V, which, considering they're... It's ridiculous for a yeah. game so, like, out in the last um, two months. So but I... I think that leads to one of our discussion points later, doesn't it, yeah. about... Uh, about sales. Um, my flatmate picked up the um, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Legacy Edition, you know, the Modern Warfare remake, for £40. Yes. I mean, uh, I feel like that game is um, given a bit of a flat... Like, I, I, have you played the campaign, right? Oh, yes. It's the campaign. Really I good, love the campaign. It's a really good campaign. They've really fought into it. And the issue I've seen on social media, especially, is everyone's bandwagoning onto the hate of Infinite Warfare because of Battlefield 1 existing. But the thing like, is, oh, actually, Infinite Warfare is the best campaign I think Call of Duty's had in a long time. I mean, if we were to compare it to its main competitor, Battlefield 1's campaign, it blows it out of the water, because Battlefield 1's campaign is... Um, I don't, know, it's I don't know why they bothered doing it. I mean, the cutscenes are really nice and all, but it felt like they just put them in a little short film instead of, yeah. um, you know, making multiplayer a, ga a game mode. Battlefield 1's an amazing game. Though, and I while I think. haven't um, also picked up any consoles, um, my brother picked up a PS4 Pro. Um, the 3DS is, I know like, quite a few people will get asked, yeah. like 100? 100? Yeah. I know America had a really good deal with the 3DS XL. It was $99. Yeah, but I'm, my brother managed to pick up the PS4 Pro 1 terabyte with um, Battlefield 1 and Watch Dogs 2 for £360, even, Jesus. which is quite good. That's really good, um, yeah. My sister picked up um, a 2DS with Mario Kart 8 and Pokemon Moon for £130. Yeah. Um, and actually, and this will surprise you, when I went to game Saturday to pick up Watch Dogs, the amount of people I saw buying Wii U's was surprised. I saw at least four people buying a Wii U with um, Smash Brothers, and I thought, do they not know the Switch is coming out in, like, four months? But, hey ho. Well, I, you, you can say it's Nintendo not advertising it, but I feel like what they did with their YouTube channel, and yeah. obviously they can't really start doing TV, running TV adverts until um, they've done the main reveal in January, which we would yeah. definitely be covering. Uh, but yeah, just to quickly go over to um, general sales on the PC side, I have the Steam Autumn sale right now. And this is up until the 29th of November. So uh, you have uh, two days to uh, get your hands on these. And um, in terms of like, what you should grab, uh, Osiris, Zero Dawn, if you want to actually get in on the ground floor on that early access title. And so there's also, for once, um, I mean, for me personally, the Steam sales don't really, doesn't really look that good right now. Like... It's not really anything that I desperately want, but well, they've got it's, it's a good sale like, on Witcher, yeah. which is a very good deal. I've managed to pick Witcher up for £29. Yeah, which was half price on Black Friday as well. Yeah. like And Witcher but, 3 is like a huge game, well, well worth the money. Yeah. Um, what else we got here? We have... Um, Fallout 4 is only £13. It, it's it's a lot of pre... It's like, like a lot of the stuff that you can buy also has sequels coming soon, like... You have um, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, which is a really good um, classic 3D fighting game. Oh, actually, no. Right now, if you're listening to this, Wolfenstein The New Orders, five quid on Steam. Stop listening to this podcast now and buy that. That was my game of the year in 2014. That game was amazing. Uh, we also have Darkest Dungeon, which is 40% uh, off. Darkest Dungeons is good for people that like... Ra oh, like Rainbow, Six, Rainbow Six Siege is £15, which is um, really good because it's, it's a very good multiplayer really game. Really good multiplayer game. There's still loads of people playing it. Um, I think... Is, I, I don't think the vibe Oh, Stick of, Stick of Truth six quid as well. Good way of preparing yourself up for next year's... Bit of a short game, but it, if you I like South Park... Well, it's... it's it's a funny game. It's not that short. It's about the length of a South Park series. Yeah. Well, that's um, what it describes it as, isn't it? It's a South Park series in the uh, video just game. A, just do a quick little um, little, little segment on VR sales. Uh, Dirt Rally is half, um, is half price at the moment, which uh, I think only currently supports the Oculus Rift, but you can, if you use Revive, run it on yeah. Vive as well. Vive itself, also, about to add, is only £759 with free shipping. Which I know that sounds it's still a lot, but usually shipping is like if you buy it from Steam, yeah. it's usually about forty quid. Although you can get it for free shipping from PC World, which I would recommend. Uh, I also know for a fact that the PlayStation on the PlayStation Network store they've had quite a lot of sales. 
uh, for Black Friday. I know my cousin picked up Odin Sphere, which is a pretty great side-scrolling uh, 2D, like, you know like, mm. those really beautiful 2D side-scrollers that they have? Yeah. It's like a side scroll and beat them up like that. That was really good. Oh, Raw Data's £23, and that's a great game. When we played it, that that was great fun, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, obviously, the VR titles are going to yes. be very limited in appeal because I think the current sales numbers are about 160,000. On, um, on, onwards on sale, down to £17. Buy onward. If you can handle any kind of VR sickness, buy onward. But not even that. Onward is the best VR game, I think. I think we can both agree. Onward's the one VR game that we keep going back to. Every, almost every day. I think we'll probably go and play this after the play, play podcast. Play onward, onward, after the, onward after the podcast. Uh, Actually, yeah, also, that's, last that's, thing I want to say, yep. the, Solus, the Solus project is only eight quid. That's a really good story. Really good on both P, uh, both on monitor and in VR. Yeah. Really great game. Really recommend that. Anyway, okay. enough corporate shilling. We don't get paid to advertise Steam games. PS4 Pro launched this week. Yes, the PS4 Pro did launch this week. Uh, so and I've ordered one. You bought one? I pre-ordered one. Um, I pre-ordered one. Uh, so I say a... pre-ordered. I've... I've got one on back order. I'm not getting it because Father Christmas is um, delivering it to me in Christmas, apparently. Uh, so you, you, you know it's coming ahead of time. Yeah, because my mum asked me to order it because she didn't know okay, what... so just to give a quick overview for people that don't know what the PS Pro is, because it hasn't been advertised the best on TV, I've noticed. Of the limited <laughs> I, haven't, t- I haven't seen one advert for it. Limited TV I always advert for PS4 Slim. Yeah. It's, it's basically a PlayStation 4, but with... Uh, a better graphics card, almost. It's it, basically what the PS4 should have been at launch. Um, yeah, pretty much. It's like it's it's updated. It's got um, it's like 4.5 teraflops, which means it's that's just computer slang for it can run games pretty well. I so. think, long story short, I think for everyone is the big focus of this, and it's the same with the Scorpion next year, the Xbox version of the PS4 Pro, is it's basically designed for 4K. 4K uh, and VR. And, yeah. 4K and VR. Uh, if you it's, have not, a, it's, add, it's not exclusive for the PS4. It's not exclusive for the PS4 Pro, but, but it runs better. Runs better, looks better. And, so, uh, yeah. if you, it, my advice uh, to keep this uh, topic short, as we kind of went off quite a lot on the sales, is that if you already have a PS4 and you don't have a 4K TV, it's not worth getting the Pro. The minimal updates isn't worth getting the Pro for. But if you if don't you have, own a but, PS4 at all, yeah, get the Pro. And, even if you don't have a 4K TV. I think especially because it's the same price as the PS4. Yeah, it's the same price I as the PS4. As someone who's had a PS4, I've only upgraded it because obviously I review games a lot, so it is worth it for me. I do think, personally, I'd love to hear your opinion, Jamie. Um, I would, If I had to buy you a PS4 Pro or an Xbox Scorpion, I'd rather get the Scorpion. I think that's going to be... Because this really isn't f- full of 4K, is it? It's not... F- no, it's, it's upscale 4K, oh. but... Yet again, you have to feel somewhat um, somewhat skeptical about the price of the of, of the Scorpion. I can I yeah. um I I was saying this to um Alessandro yesterday about it is that the um it uh, bleeds into the uh, uh, switch uh, switch rumors. But if um, Nintendo's console can run for the price that it's uh, it's they say it's going to run for, which we'll discuss later. Which we'll discuss later for the power that it says it's going to be at, which we'll discuss later. <laughs> But also, the fact you can get a PS4 launch console and for, and two games for £190, yeah. I would do that. I don't think the PS4, even with 4K, is worth it. I would much actually rather, and this is what I think a lot of people I know are doing, they're buying a basic PS4, because it still works, and using the money that they would have spent on the PS4 Pro on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, that, that's that's a good um, idea as well. Because I don't I mean, think this full pro right now has enough software to justify. Well, let's just let's just quickly go over the um, g- current games that are upgraded by it majorly. So Uncharted Three is a big oh, sorry four, four four is a big one. It makes it look um, would you say a lot better? Or uh, um, obviously I haven't had to get my hands on one. If you've got a decent HD um, 4K TV, and I have, it is note it is noticeably better. As is PSVR games, like they run noticeably better. Some of the well, the first party ones run noticeably um, smoother and textures a lot quicker. Would you say it's like uh, for someone that owns a Vive? Uh, would you say it's like super sampling? <sighs> Depends on the game, really. Yeah. Some are, some aren't. Uh, Dishonored Two um, can run at fourteen forty p, which is obviously four K. 
Um, and it, do, but it doesn't have HDR, and HDR, I feel like, from what I've seen, is the oh, best part about the My mate, Pro. my friend bought his Xbox One S RAM, and we played Forza Horizon 3 on a HDR TV, and HDR was the most, it's, HDR is more impressive than 4K. I think, in my yeah, I, I think HDR is going to be the major pushing point for this, because it makes the games look, just the colours are so much crisper, and so much more detail, and it's just amazing. <laughs> We need to probably wrap up on this and move on to... Yeah, so just really really quickly, just list off a few games that already uh, have uh, for, uh, pit pro support. The new Hitman has it. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider has it. Uncharted Watch 4, FIFA, 2. Uh, if you stand, Last of Us has it. Battlefield 1, FIFA 17, Ratchet mm -hmm. and Clank, the new Deus Ex, Overwatch, which apparently works pretty well. Nice. And I'm guessing most... It's, upcoming first party games will yeah, have it. I think I think most upcoming first party games, lots of upcoming for Final Fantasy 15 has been confirmed. I think day one to have a, a, a PS4 it's getting a patch. patch. Yep. But anyway, so the last the last bit of news we've got today is UB30. Jamie, take it away. Okay, so you might have known for a few a few months so far, Ubisoft has been giving out a free game every month. And, if give, I just, and give Ubisoft credit, they're actually quite they're good pretty games. Pretty good games. Uh, just to pull it up. In January, you were um, January you were given um, Prince, the original Prince of Persia: Sands of Time, which is quite an which, old game. I wish they, I wish they'd bring that series back. It was such. such a good, it got great. killed by uh, Assassin's Three, but God, it was a good game. Uh, they, uh, they, then they gave the original Splinter Cell. Then they gave Rayman Origins, which is one of the best side-scrolling platformers ever, which, uh, besides the Legends, I think the Rayman side-scrolling games actually beat the Mario side-scrolling games in terms oh, of fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. Then it was the September, it was, it was the, crew, the Crew, which I actually good... got. And it's really good. Um, it's a pretty good racer. It's got an okay uh, online community presence. Beyond Good and Evil. Which is another rumour we've got. Uh, got, for, uh, got, for, got for the Switch, but we're, we're keeping you enticed by saying stuff that's coming up. Beyond Good and Evil is was such an underrated game. It's it's rare, right? Yeah. Yeah, rare did it. It's amazing. It's like... It's the way to do the Kinect shit that yeah, never the, worked out. It's, it, okay, it's platonic rare. No, it's not even platonic rare. It might be platonic rare. It's the people that made cameo elements of pa uh, darkness. Know. You talk about it. I'm going to find out on Google. Uh, so yeah, Beyond Good and, Beyond Good and Evil... It was, it was a really strange game. It was yeah. a, a bit like a platforming beat em up almost. There was yeah. elements of platforming and elements of combat, and there was also elements of Pokemon Snap. In the way that you could take photos of stuff and get credits, and it was it was really just a classic collectathon that was actually released in a time where it, it was very it was Ubisoft Mon Montepilla and Ubisoft Milan. Well, I think it was rare. Okay, that, that's a compliment to the game that I thought Beyond Good and Evil was made by Rare. I thought it was, I think they were doing the sequel that got cancelled or something. I know Rare got involved with it somewhere. They were right, maybe? I don't think so. I actually just think it's because it feel it it just feels it's such like a good a game. Rare game. Uh, okay, November, which is this month, and which if you go on your Ubisoft Uplay account right now, you can get Far Cry Blood Dragon, which is just a really silly. It's kind of basically Far Cry in the eighties, high on cocaine. Yeah, that's basically it. It's uh, a great no game. No one knows what December is yet, but that's what the, um, that's what was going on at the moment. But UB30 is something that just started, which is 30 days of Ubisoft, which is... The, um, yes. And so on day one... Uh, well, it's, it's, it's forcing me to sign into my Ubisoft first. <laughs> I know uh, that day one uh, gave you the Rayman... Run, you know Rayman Run, the mobile game? Yeah. Oh, is it basically a Christmas stock? Yeah, it's a Christmas stocking. Well, Christmas thing. No, oh, damn. I, I did sign in. Yeah, so yeah, Rayman Classic. Oh, no, it's not It's not that. Sorry, it's... um. Yeah, it's it's the original Rayman, the PS1 Rayman on your phone. Um, really? It does seem uh, like dude. it's Android only. You know, like, today they're giving away digital posters. I've got today's giveaway is exclusive digital posters from E3 2016. Oh damn! It's... How are the posters? This is quite good. Um. So yeah, there's the the original Rayman is back. So, uh, for some weird reason, that's still free. So you can go and grab that on the Google Google Play uh, App Store. I'm not sure how long that will be the truth, but you can grab that then. 
Uh, no one knows. I don't know what the Tuesday was. Yesterday's was, because it's one day it's offer. One day offer. Um, Today's, yesterday's was digital posters. And today... Is... Is... Um, UB, UB30 exclusive GIF. <laughs> Dope. But bro. I think that rounds it up for the news, news this week. Which, um, Not really much happened at all. Yeah, we really kind of just uh, talked a few subjects to death to make up for the lack of news. Please, something happen next week. <laughs> Otherwise, we're gonna have to uh, just start discussing news from a year ago. <laughs> yeah. So, right. our first discussion. Uh, moving on to the discussion segment. Discussion time. Name not final. <laughs> is um, there there are poor game sales uh, in, the in the UK? In the yeah. UK. So let me just do a bit of background knowledge for everyone. Um, Rise of the Tomb Raider under um, undersold. Um, the PS4 after, version. Yeah, PS4 version. After a week on the market, it sold less than 57,000 units in the UK. Um, Watch Dogs 2 sales were nowhere near Watch Dogs 1. Um, as reported by Eurogamer, it was dramatically down. Um, Time for two. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the Watch Dogs 2 sales are at just 80,000 in comparison to the first one in the UK. Um, achieved 380,000 in the first sale. Um, Infinite Warfare sales are down 46%. Um, Surprisingly, only 80,000 copies sold in the first week. Um, Dishonored 2, compared to Dishonored 1, is down 38%. What else have we got? Titanfall More. 2. Titanfall 2 is also down about 50% on the original one, even though it's on multiple platforms now. So, Jamie, what's going on? Are people just not interested in games anymore in the UK? I wouldn't, I would definitely not say that. I would say it's, there's, there's some, I think it's, it's a case by case basis, and unfortunately, all these games came out at once, which yeah. also detract from the uh, sales of each other. So, I don't, um, if I don't just... remember a month when there's so many good games that I've wanted yeah. have been in so, like, I think all those games were in like f four, three weeks of each other, weren't they? Yeah. So, I think if we just start from the top with, uh, let's start with uh, Timeful 2. Uh, the reason why I feel like Timefall 2 didn't sell as well is because they released it in the same... I think it was the same week. The week after. The, the it week was after Battlefield... Battlefield 1, which... And the week before Infinite, Infinite week Warfare. Before Infinite, um, Infinite Warfare. And so I feel like when it comes to FPSs, there are three main... Well, let's say four main crowds for, for the sake of new, uh, newcomers. You have the people that like Battlefield. People, people that like, like Call of Duty. Duty. People that like Overwatch slash, slash TF2. And people that like CSGO and armor. Not armor, uh, insurgency. Yeah, uh, Rainbow Six. You know, realistic, super quick deaths. Yeah. And the issue with that is, is where is the room for Titanfall to exist? The first no. one didn't get that uh, that great reviews. But the problem with the first one, I got it when the Xbox One came out. The problem with it was, it was a cam there was no campaign. The multiplayer, while the multiplayer was still the best multiplayer experience I've had this generation, it got boring extremely quickly, even with the free DLC. Yeah, I, I, and I feel I feel like that's I think Titanfall I mean, Two is pretty easily explained. It was just it was swamped. It's it's a genre that's already like oversaturated. I also and think it just didn't bring enough news yeah. to the table. I also think like a lot of these, a lot of gamers feel burned because all of these are sequels by the first ones. Well, but I got, I felt burnt by the first Titanfall, so I'm not too. It's not too such a priority. Okay, uh, moving on from feeling burnt, we have Watch Dogs Two, which is uh, at Actually, the moment my, probably my favorite game of uh, this month. Uh, Final Fantasy Fifteen is coming Actually, out in fair, like, two days, yeah. so I doubt that's going to stay the same. But yeah, but, you know, massive improvement on the first massive one. Massive improvement on the first one, and the reason why it didn't sell is because Ubisoft. Pretty much, without sugarcoating it, just flat out lied with Watch Dogs yep. 1, with what was going to be, what was shown graphically. Well, um, Watch Dogs 1 was the first I don't think any game, game I remember. Yeah. It's the first game I remember where Ubisoft got slated for the trailer and the game looking totally different. I don't, um, I don't actually think, though, that it had any gameplay features missing. I think it... I don't no, think it, it was like No Man's Sky. I think it was just. It was a solid. Game. It was a solid game. It was just overhyped. Overhyped because it was supposed to be this gorgeous-looking title. That it was meant to be. To be fair, it was meant to be the first true next-generation game. Yeah, and it kind of fell flat on that one. And so yeah, the reason why Watch Dogs Two didn't sell very well is people felt like it was going to be another Watch Dogs One, and it but, and it isn't. 
But I'd recommend if everyone buys that now because it is a great game. It's a really good game. Um, don't really pay much attention to the story. It's very um, hip and urban. It's, uh, but it's still a solid game. You get a it also feels like, uh, to give the story credit, it feels like it takes the piss out of itself. I think it knows the story is not the strong point. Yeah, I, I, I like... It's a story about hackers, and it's really stereotypical hacking, and there's memes and other oh, such. Yeah. Jamie. Yeah. How's the multiplayer? How's the multiplayer? Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> when you like match up to hacking and stuff, when you like go into multiplayer on your uh, on your phone and actually choose the multiplayer, it, it feels as good as the first one did. You know, the erratic stuff. Uh, as in for the seamless multiplayer, uh, I don't know yet. It's working all pretty all right on Xbox One. It. Had a few issues at launch, but it's pretty unnoticeable now. But anyway, moving on, we've also got... Um, Dishonored, um, Dishonored, uh, Dishonored uh, 2. Uh, Dishonored 1 was amazing. Yeah, it was so a great... It, it was not a case of the you know, first game let down. being you know, let down. Its case was, I have not seen it advertised anywhere. I've seen, actually, I'll tell you what I've seen. You know in town, in Birmingham, where we've got um, that corner where we've got the CX shop and the KFC? Yeah. That's the only place I've seen a paper advert for it in the entire country like, so far. I mean, it's it's uh, Bethesda, so they have the money to advertise. Just just put that out there. But, but to, uh, compare yeah. it to, to compare it to a current advertisement campaign I've seen, I've seen no less. Uh, I, um, in the times I've been, a few times I've been outside in the last few days, is I've seen no less than twelve buses with Final Fantasy fifteen on the side. For every bus I've seen, you've got an advert for Final Fantasy XV or the Grand Tour. Or the Grand Tour. Like, those are the two, like, they are really pushing it, and I think it's going to sell really and well. And to be fair, I'm, I'm upset because it's on one, and I've played this on two as well, but both good games. It's not as even as if, it, as if Dishonored 2 had to basically reinvent itself because the first game was a letdown. It wasn't. It was a great game. Um, the split, just to give a quick talk about Dishonored 2 from what, uh, what I played. Uh, the split up of characters is really good. Emily feels unique. Corvo feels like Corvo from the first game. Uh, your choices still seem to have some sort of value. Yeah. You can still stealth it. Um, they, or, or kill everyone. They made it more viable to actually kill everyone in this one. Like, combat feels a lot more satisfying. Like, there's yeah. like 20, played... 30 different execution animations. I played, I played 30 minutes of it, and the progression tree is, like, very suited, so you can each way has a different kind of impact if that makes I mean, sense. If there was a problem I had to point out about Dishonored 1 was that it, it didn't let you go like guns blazing kill everyone but Dishonored yeah. 2 definitely lets you go guns, guns blazing kill everyone. The third game we've got is or the fourth game third or fourth is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare which actually really I'm good campaign. I mean, best campaign in Battlefield 1. Yeah, way better campaign than Battlefield, uh, Battlefield 1. I haven't played Titanfall 2's campaign, so I can't really comment on that. Uh, have you played Titanfall 2's campaign? Um, my friend's played it. He said it's all right. It's just a bit short and a bit... Meh. That's the word he used was actually meh. It's, it's great, but it's not... Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think Infinite Warfare's uh, campaign is actually really good. Uh, and just for saying a positive thing about Infinite Warfare... Uh, this podcast is going to be like downvoted because we don't instantly jump onto the Infinite but, Warfare sucks. The multiplayer sucks. I'm not going. I'm putting, putting it out there now. The multiplayer was terrible. I played like two matches, but the ca campaign and the zombies were great fun. Yeah, I think I think they've really got an idea with this. I think they should. But I do think the problem with you, um, X with what do you call it, um, the low sales is down to um, fatigue. Like we've had a Call of Duty game for the like, every year for the last ten years and. It, I think people are getting bored, especially when Battlefield 1's multiplayer is I think they, I think they started marketing it the way they're marketing it now. Like, the screw it, let's go to space and, like, make it less serious. I think yeah. they started marketing that from launch instead of, instead of a, just a way of combating Battlefield 1. Is I think they would have sold more units because more people would have seen it as mm. Call of Duty, like, you know, being self-aware. Uh, yeah. uh, how serious and attempted gritty it is and everything. And our final game is Rise of the Tomb Raider, which undersold um, on PS4, which it's obviously been on Xbox One and PC I mean, for I'll, years. I'll, I'll take this. Um, I never bought an Xbox One at launch because I was thoroughly annoyed with Microsoft's uh, original idea with it um, and how they backpedaled on that. I mean, I, I, I've forgiven them now because obviously it's been, it's been years. You can't yeah. hold a grudge that long. 
but and just generally the lack of uh, any exclusives that I personally look forward to. Obviously, car games and uh, Halo is good if you like that stuff. And it was it came out on that this time last year in November, yeah. November last year, and they bought it as a year long exclusive. It was, a, it was a good game as well. Um, uh, it, but it was, I played it on PC. Best. Yeah, it, it was released on PC like a month afterwards, uh, or in January, and that was fun. And it's you know it's 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 one of the it's a new Tomb Raider game. They're really good. But I feel like all PS4 it's owners... Improve, it's an improvement over the first one, I'd like to add. It's, I think there's a more focus on actually tomb raiding. Uh, there's a lot more tombs you can explore now. Yeah, I feel like there's three things that really um, was the low sales of this one. Lack of advertisement. Yep, I would agree with you on that. For the PS4 version. So, not many, so, yeah, people just don't care. It's been out for a year. They'll probably watch the Let's Play of it. And, also, it. and also, I think the third one, I think this is the biggest one, I think we both agree on it. I think... PS4 owners are pissed off with Microsoft. Yeah. I, I don't think, I think they're, because a year's, I don't see the point of a year's exclusive. I don't see what it's done except alienate the brand. I do, I mean, think, I do think that Sony has actually got a year's exclusive for another game that yeah. um, when it comes out is, I think, I think, the, I think Final you, Fantasy VII's remasters are, uh, have year-long exclusives attached to them. Isn't there going to, there was leaked on Reddit the other day. Um, there's a, they've already confirmed. I think it's going to be confirmed at the Video Game Awards this week. There's a new Tomb Raider coming out. Um, Legend of the Tomb Raider or, or something. There's a third one in development. Yeah, yeah. I've seen. I've seen. I've seen the leaks about that. Um, is that an Xbox One exclusive again? Or I don't know. Yeah, I think it's rumored to be announced Thursday at the Video Game Awards. Okay, so well, that's something we will be covering, and uh, you'll see uh, my angered reaction if it is true. To be another Xbox One exclusive. But I think, to be fair, I think we can both agree. I think the problem for me, I mean, I'd love to say, I think the four main problems for me with games this year have been, A, a lot of them, I think, in general, a lot of them are sequels and people felt burnt by the original ones. So they're waiting to get, like, Watch Dogs 2, I waited until I can get it for, like, 30 quid because yeah. it's cheaper. I felt burnt by the first one. Second one is that a lot of these games came out within a couple of weeks of each other. So you really have time to enjoy them and there's a lot of money. In England, to get all the games we've just mentioned, you need like 320 quid and that's a lot of money. I think the third Especially one is... for the age bracket that's going to buy it, which is like students yeah. and um, like... I mean, the whole holiday years. pissed me off. Like we have loads of games from October to December and then it's pretty much empty in like... Chris in like summertime, isn't it? Yeah, like that's what you hear a lot of indie developers just, like showing off their games and stuff in like summer. Oh, Man Sky came out July. Yeah, so uh, yeah, definitely that. And I think, so yeah, I think poor sales is mainly because of lack of exposure and just generally fatigue. We need new IPs to come up, new ideas. And uh, generally, a lot of the best games that uh, were supposed to come out this year have been delayed to 2017. Persona yeah. 5 is 2017, Mass Effect and Dropper is 2017. I think, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I've heard of it. And, so it. yeah, I, pre I, pre I pre ordered it. Baited breath, baited breath. Um, so, for this part of the, uh, this segment, we're just going to first of all start with um, the fact that the launch, the, what's it, launch date? Movement date. They broke. Basically, a bunch of retailers have sort started selling the game before they should be able to. Yep. And so Amazon, Amazon has shipped ours, and we're expecting it either tomorrow, tomorrow or... or Tuesday. Uh, and there'll be a, there'll be a full review of well, there'll be uh, first impressions of the game uh, up on Wednesday. And so yeah, our, um, so we recently uh, went to the. the breaking news. What. Rick and Morty be delayed till 2017. That's not that's not gaming. It's, yes, but it's still the VR game. Even it's been delayed till um, at least the Q4 24 6 17 even. Oh, the the game's been delayed. Yeah, the okay. VR game. That's gaming. That's gaming at least. I but anyway, you... why uh, why Fraps messed up by the way? <laughs> it's no, you say keep clicking out of it. Um, I was saying, yeah. So we went, we had the uh, the joy of being like every uh, other normal person and going to one of the Final Fantasy 15 launches around the world last week. Yeah, we watched the, um, the film Kingsglaive so and a source of exclusive footage of the game, which is online because IGN streamed it online anyway, making it pointless to go there unless you want to see Kingsglaive. 
Which was actually, I didn't have much ex- expectations for that film, but it was actually a really good film. Really good action film, amazing CGI, and apparently it's pretty important to uh, pl- see, to play the game with it. But the yeah. day one update for Final Fantasy 15 actually come, contains scenes from Kingslayer. Oh, it does, does it? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, make sure the person's up to date and up yeah. to speed. Which is very good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, about Final Fantasy uh, f- uh, 15 coming out, discussions, what are your expectations? As someone that hasn't played a Final Fantasy 15, Final Fantasy uh, game... I'm not sure... I mean, yes, but from what I've seen, the main concern I, I feel like I might overwhelm everything that I do. Jamie? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there might be too much to do. Like, in the depth of it is so much that I might get lost. I don't like games. I know it sounds stupid. I don't like games that require a lot and lot and lot of effort. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm worried that the game might be so like deep within menus and customization and missions and stuff that I might get lost. Apart from that, I'm really excited. Like, I love the film. I wouldn't say you get lost. Um, from what I can see, what I can see, and what I know of Final Fantasy games, uh, it's less getting lost. It's more there's a lot to do. Like you'll do the first like opening tutorial, and then you, the game opens up, and then you can go do whatever you want. You can go. Uh, one of the cu- one of the uh, tra- trailers I saw was one of the side quests was you get to look at Noctis's um, future wife's uh, wedding dress. Yeah. Like you go and check that. out. That's like a quest or another one. You go and fight a turtle that's bigger than the screen itself. <laughs> Uh, that Conan on Clueless Gameplay, just to please segue into that. Uh, so Conan O'Brien of American uh, uh, news show fame on his show Clueless Gamer did a segment on Final Fantasy XV and people weren't very happy with the way he, they treated the game. Well, that, I don't think people understand what Clueless Game is all about. Game is all about. Um, but from what you did see is that the game looks great. Like the vision looks great. will look even better on the PS4 Pro when it gets its patch on launch. Yep. I think it's massive open world. Um, it has, I think, 60, 70 hours of main story. 200 plus quest. Well, I think it's at the last count, is 210 quests, side quests. Something like that. It's like, the game, if you try and beat it completely, it's probably going to be like an average Final Fantasy game, about 120, 150 hours. Damn, that's impressive. But yeah, um, so if it's, uh, for a quick idiot's guide to Final Fantasy... Uh, Final Fantasy is a game series which likes to take traditional medieval concepts and mesh them together with fantasy. That's why they're still using swords and stuff, but also guns. Yeah. So it's like steampunky almost, and very complicated I think it's also important to add that each game, even though it's the 15th, is individual. You don't need to play previous games to know what's happening. For those that have never heard of Final Fantasy, uh, that is correct. You just... uh, you have an individual game. So, I mean, it's, we've got a, a 24 hours with review coming Wednesday, I believe, isn't it? Yes, Wednesday. And uh, unless it's pushed to Thursday, unless we feel like we need to, you know, do, play more. Play, have a 48 hours with it. I'm not sure what else we can say about this. Cause I, it's a game that's I not yet. I um, wasn't even aware of the game, really, until Wednesday. I'm not going to lie, I haven't followed it at all. And actually, for me, that's really good, because I've gone into it with no spoilers, do you know what I mean? I don't have many spoilers. I've um, I've avoided spoilers online, especially now the yeah. leaks have happened. I've been really looking forward to it. I mean, avoid, I'm... Avoid red, the subreddit. subreddit. I'll... I, I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan, like, huge, huge. Uh, I'm more yeah. of a massive fan of its uh, counterpart, Kingdom Hearts, which is a game that uses the characters from it. Yeah. Uh, there's a new one of those coming out in uh, January. Just... You know you're going to get a uh, 48 hours on. Um, 48, 24 hours on. And yeah, so I think really short segment for that because I don't really think of anything else we can discuss for a game that isn't out yet. Yeah. Dope. Okay, so uh, moving Final on to... Final one is to... the Video Game Awards. Yep. What to expect and our predictions. So I thought we could start with by going through our predictions of what um, we think will win. I'll read the categories out and then we'll say who we... Who, if it was down to us, who we'd vote for. But I do just want to do a shameless plug right now. What time's it UK time? 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Yeah, from 2 a.m. on Thursday. 2 a.m. this Thursday. That will be the we'll, 1st of December. We'll be um, live streaming on YouTube. 
uh, to be like this podcast uh, for, uh, format, live, stri- live streaming on YouTube. So you'll st- it'll still be uploaded to our normal platforms afterwards. afterwards so if you want to catch up. And um, you'll get our live reactions to uh, various things, like for example, the uh, Rage, if uh, Rise of the New Tomb Raider is also a year-long Xbox One exclusive. We have uh, got drinking games as well. Drinking games, so it's, uh, you know, get, out, get us through those awkward celebrity endorsements. Uh, so I've, anyway. also, I've also heard that uh, Kojima-san will be here to uh, receive Creator of the Decade Award. I just wanted to present the award to, so- to Konami. That, that, he didn't get, um, <laughs> la- that he didn't get last year because he wasn't allowed to go. But now he's a free man. He can um, go where he wants. So, anyway, I want to go through all the awards with you. And then... Up, um, Sandra? Right, so... Number one is our Game of the Year. The nominations are Doom... Inside, Overwatch, Titanfall 2, Uncharted 4, A Thief Sent. I would um, say Overwatch. Yeah, like, I'm not going to lie. None of them particularly excite me. Like, I would I would vote for Overwatch, but... Oh, well, Ash... It's difficult. I think Overwatch, because it's... A bit between it's Overwatch really and Uncharted. It's really popular on Xbox One, um, PC... And PS4, whereas yeah. Uncharted 4 is a PS4 exclusive. I think it would be Overwatch. Are we agreed? Yeah, I'm going to say Overwatch. Okay, next one's Best Studio Game Direction. The awards are Blizzard for Overwatch, DICE for Battlefield 1, ID Software for Doom, Naughty Dog for Uncharted, and Respawn for Titanfall 2. I'm going to have to give this probably to Battlefield 1. I'm going to have to give this to Naughty Dog. Um, the direction and the... Gameplay and the beauty of Uncharted 4 was beautiful. It was an amazing game. I would say Battlefield 1 because just of how visceral the multiplayer feels. Yeah, okay. Next right. one. Yep. Best narrative. We've got Firewatch, which is a great indie game, indie game by Campo Santo. We've got Inside by Play Dead. Mafia 3 by 13 and Hangar 13 and 2K. Oxen 3 by Night School and Uncharted 4. I'm probably going to go with Firewatch. Yeah, actually, Firewatch. It was, a, it was a new story. Uncharted 4 was a lot of the same. Hmm. Mafia 3 was a good... I might give it actually to Mafia 3 just for its description of racism in the South. Yeah, the... It might, it, you mean like people might vote it because of the... Um... Yeah. yeah, I don't think it should win. I think Firewatch should win, but I think Mafia might nip it because of the how... I wouldn't say Inside because Inside felt very Journey. Like, yeah. Not Journey, uh, very Limbo. Obviously, same developers. Uh, I right. Yeah, I Best art direction. Abzu, Firewatch, Inside, Overwatch, and Uncharted 4. Abzu. Yeah. Abzu is a fucking gorgeous game. Uh, can we swear? Uh, I don't think it's fair. I, I, I'm now. I swore. <laughs> we are now. We are, like, we are now. Best music and sound design. Battlefield 1, Doom, Inside, Res Infinite and Thumper. Thumper. I think Battlefield One might win it. No, no, Doom. Has it got a good sound? Doom's got like a really heavy metal, like this, like like soundtrack. Battlefield One didn't really have much of a soundtrack; it's just shooting. Gun sounds are really good, but I feel like Doom has a better combination of background music and gun sounds. Doom is really good, by the way. It's probably pretty cheap now. Pick it up. <laughs> it is. I think it's like six quid on the Steam some win sale. Yeah. Best performance is Alex Hernandez as Lincoln Clay Mafia Three, Sissy Jones as Delilah in Firewatch, Emily Rose as Al- Alina Alana in Uncharted Four, Nolan North as Nathan Drake in Uncharted Four, Rich Summer as Henry in Firewatch, and Troy Baker as Sam Drake in Uncharted Four. I, mean, basically between I, want to give it to, I want to give it to Troy Baker because he's like my favourite voice actor ever. But um... I think actually Rich Summer might win it. For what? Um, he was Henry in Firewatch. Oh, he was Henry. I would feel like Delilah's performance was really good in it as well, though. That's like my. Okay, no, I'll give you that one. So. Delilah. Are you writing down what we have so we can actually like the? Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking the notes so we can like. Can... Well, you're... If you watch the live stream, you'll hear it again because, like, as the nominees come up, we'll like say what we voted for. 
Ninth Games for Impact Awards, so basically thought-provoking games. Mm, 1979 Revolution, Blockhood, Orwell, Sea Hero Quest, or That Dragon, Cancer. Oh, That Dragon, Cancer. Yeah, that game actually made me so sad. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, I don't know what's it, no, it's, it's, uh, Cancer's a very hard topic to approach, and it was a But very, it made it quite approachable. It was a very personal thing for the uh, for the developer of the game, as it was about his kid. And I, I definitely feel like that showed. I, I think yeah. it was a really beautiful game. Best independent game, no sign of um, a certain game we're not talking about, that we mentioned earlier. Firewatch. Hyperlight Drifter, Inside, Star Dew Valley, and The Witness. Oh God. I'm going to go with Firewatch. It's either, it, I think Firewatch, but it could be Star Dew Valley. Star Dew Valley is like the best, uh, uh, the best Harvest Moon game ever. That is right. the Harvest Moon game. The best mobile handheld games. Clash Royale. If that wins, I'm just going to give up and just cry. The category that no one cares about. <laughs> Fire Emblem Fates. Wait, mobile? Oh, shit, mobile covers 3DS as well. Yep. Okay, go on, keep going. It's mobile handheld. Right. Monster Hunter Generations. Mm. Severed. And the one that will win it, by Ninantic, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go has to win this one. No, because it was a fad. And, like, a lot of people, like, the majority of player base stopped. Yeah, but still, it was, had such a social impact. I would say in terms of voting... Oh, is, is that what they said? No, they just said best mobile it's, game, right? Yeah, but it's not open to public, remember? Oh, right. Uh, maybe... Yeah, it's probably Pokemon Go, then. Best VR game? Um, it makes me sad there's no Onward they're, on there. They're all PSVR, PSVR games, I've heard. Yeah. Batman Arkham VR, E Valkyrie, Job Simulator, Res Infinite, or Thumper? It's, I'm going to go with... It's, it's Batman. Oh, I'm going to go with Eve Valkyrie. No, it's, it's Batman. Batman is like, from what I've heard, I haven't had a chance to play it, but um, I've heard it's like the most immersive experience. Even people that have a vibe, they love the Batman VR experience. Best action game. Battlefield 1, Doom, Gears of War, Overwatch, Titanfall. I'm going to give it to Battlefield. I'm going to give it to Battlefield, but I get the feeling Overwatch is going to clean up. Everything. Everything. Okay. Best action adventure game. We've got Dishonored 2, mm. Hitman, Hyper Light Drifter, Ratchet and Ch Clank, and Uncharted 4. Yeah, it's going to be Uncharted 4 there because they didn't put it against that. Exactly. But I want Hitman to win it. Hitman was Hitman such a good was game. amazing, and everyone complains about the uh, episodic Excellent. structure, but it works, okay? It, it works for the game. It encourages you to play through the levels again. Rant over. Yeah. Looking forward Best to Best RPG two. game. Dark Souls 3, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, The Witcher 3, Free. Wild Hunt, The Witcher Blood Free. DLC, The Witcher 3, World of Warcraft Legion, and Free. Okay, I think we're both agreeing on that. Witcher Free. <laughs> Best Even fighting expansion. game. <laughs> Killer Instinct Season 3, King of Fighters 14, Pokemon Tournament, and Street Fighter 5. Street I Fighter. hope. I don't think it will win because it's had so much pro many problems with the DLC and such. I think Just actually, poking. I think Poke. I think oh, actually, Killer Instinct might take it because it's a very good game. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's got a low player count, but it's a great game. Now the best one for the people who are up at two AM watching it: best family game. Best family game. Yeah. Dragon Quest Builders, Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, Pokemon Go, Ratchet and Clank, Skylanders, Imaginators. I'm going to go for Skylanders. I'm going to say Skylanders, but, but I've been playing Dragon Quest Builders on my Vita. It is yep. amazing. Like, it is Minecraft for people that don't like Minecraft. Like Minecraft. Right, best strategy game. Civilization VI, Fire Emblem's Fate, The Banner Saga 2, Total Warhammer War... Total War, Warhammer, and XCOM 2. Oh, I'm going to give Civ it to Six. XCOM. Civ 6 made so many improvements over Civ 5. Okay, no, that's fair enough. There's quite a lot of categories. How long does the show go on for? Uh, it's like an hour and a half, I think. Like about, uh, about the average length of this podcast. <laughs> Best game, um, sports and racing games. FIFA 17, Forza 3, Horizon 3, MLB The Show 16, NBA 2K17, Pro Evolution Soccer 2017. 
You know, I want Forza 3 to get it. Have I ever ever Evolution Soccer is like the better of the games, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm saying I want Forza Horizon 3 to get this. FIFA's it's probably gonna win. Like, FIFA, I think, always wins it. Yeah. Best multiplayer game. Battlefield 1. Get Have you noticed Call of Duty's not been mentioned in any of these? Yeah. Battlefield 1. Gears of War Overwatch. 4. Overcooked. Overwatch. Overwatch. Rainbow Six Siege and Titanfall 2. Overwatch. I want Rainbow Six Siege to win it, though, because it's a great multiplayer. It is really good, but Overwatch sold way more. <laughs> So these now we're going on to fans' choices. Are you writing down like the? Yes, sir. Okay. The them. fans' choices. These are the ones voted for by people like us. We've got number one, best esports player. I've had none of these. Faker, League of Legends, Cold Zero, Counter Strike. Any of those? Um, watch? Hang on. Sorry for offending you and like pronouncing your name wrong for StarCraft Two. Beyond Hyun Woo, um, Street Fighter Five Infiltration. Um, Super Smash Brothers Hungry Box. Oh, give it the Hungry Box. Okay. I like. I like, I, I like. I like Pro Smash. Best esports team. Um, SK Telecom T1 for League of Legends. God, you can tell they're all virgins. <laughs> Wings Gaming from Dota you make Two. Millions. <laughs> Shut up. SK Gaming. Rocks Tigers for League of Legends and Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine. Yeah. All right, best esports game, which I hope next year, yes, Splatoon wins. Um, Counter Strike Global Event Offensive, Dota 2, League of Legends, Overwatch, or Street Fighter? Overwatch. Overwatch. I, love Trend I love CSGO, but Overwatch is just a. a Trending Gamer, Lyric, Jack Jacksepticeye, Danny O'Dwyer, Boogie2988, or Angry Joe. I want, I want Boogie2988 to win. I don't want any, like, either Jack. Uh, or Angry Joe. Who or is Boogie Jack? Who is Jack? Jack Septico. Yeah, never heard of him. You've never heard of the 18 million superstar that st like gained those subscribers in three years. Like he got a shout out from PewDiePie, like among like about uh, ten other people that got shout outs from him. But he ben used he used the shout out to put just to propel himself forward so much. Okay. I'm Next Markiplier month. isn't in it though, because like best Markiplier fan so creation. Happy. Mm. There's only two in this category: Brutal Doom '64 or Enderal: The Shards of Order. I've had none of neither of these. Enderal is the massive Skyrim uh, overhaul. Oh, then Enderal. Yeah, Enderal's gonna win. Most anticipated game of the year: God of War, which I don't even think will come out next year. Horizon Zero Dawn, Ooh. Mass Effect Andromeda, Red Dead 2, or The Legend of Zelda. I think it's The Legend of Zelda. No, I think it might be actually, yeah, because it's public voted. I think it's it'll be Legend of Zelda, Zelda, but I think Mass, I think Mass Effect Andromeda should win it. I, I'm surprised Persona Five wasn't on there. Like, it's 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 no longer a niche, which is. Surprising. I'm not gonna lie. I actually think these awards this year are a bit disappointing. Like, they're all the same. Well, no, it, just because Overwatch exists and cleans up in nearly every category. I, it will do, I guarantee it. It's it no, but do you think it deserves it? Like I don't know if you play much of it, but it's a really it's solid a good, it's, it's one of those games. I don't like it, but I can get why people like it and I can tell it's a good game if that makes sense. Yeah. Um I yeah, it deserves to win because it's it's much better than uh, it's not as good as Battleborn. That was a great game. Wait, Battleborn's not out yet. The Battleborn has been out for like, it launched like, it's three quid now, dude. Wait, what do you expect to see in the night? Um, I'll tell you what I don't expect to see. Anything to do with the Nintendo Switch. We might, like you said earlier, we might get a couple of logos though. Yeah, I think we might get a few Switch logos and some of like, and I think it's going to be surprising where you see them. I think you're going to see them in some like, quite graphically demanding games if we see them at all. I hope we see it in Mass Effect Andromeda, because I know we're getting, that's getting its full unveil on the December Thursday. It's going to get a game, yeah, it's going to get a full gameplay trailer, yeah. or gameplay, um, it's going to have, I think it's rumoured to be about six minutes long, or just like pure gameplay. Yeah. It's also rumoured to end of a trailer, um, and the most important, what everyone wants, a release date. And if that says March 17th, then even if it doesn't have the NX, uh, the Switch logo... If that comes out, I can imagine you because you're ordering it on Amazon coming to the Switch or should be the only person that'd be, yeah, yeah, Mass Effect Andromeda, please. I think the only person. I think a lot oh, yeah. of people would actually not get it on, con uh, on main consoles and get it on the Switch. 
Just for the portability. Just for the portability. And I, think that's good. I, would love, I would love to spend my two hour train trips home exploring random planets. I mean, it's going to be awesome enough doing that with Zelda, so. Yeah, true. Um, I mean, I mean, there's also rumors of Duke Nukem reappearing. Which, are you excited for? You know what? I'm going to go an unpopular opinion here. I liked. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. It was so level. bad. It, it was, was such a bad it day. Was, it was fun. Like, graphically awful. Storyline awful. Level design, pretty poor. Game <laughs> mechanics, terrible. But for some weird reason, I couldn't hate it. It was yeah. It was fun. Maybe I like trash games. I had about 92 hours on it on Steam. What? <laughs> I don't even know how. Multiplayer? There was, there was multiplayer. <laughs> I generally don't know why I got 92 hours on that game. Okay, so that's the Game Awards. And, uh, we, and to end out the podcast like we do every week, we're going to look at was... what's coming in this week. And as a special, since uh, quite a few things have come out uh, last week. And it's our first episode. Our uh, first episode. We're going to look at the previous one. So, there was this little game. Um, there was a sequel to, like, a couple of other games called Pokemon Sun and Moon that came out. I wonder if anyone, any, any of you guys got, any of you guys got that? Uh, I remember it. Do you remember it? I remember. I, I remember Pokemon. Uh, so, that sold really well. Apparently. But I didn't, I didn't buy it. Did you buy it? Uh, no, because... Well, why is that, Jamie? Because I kind of... Uh, the, obviously, the rumours that we discussed earlier is that it, the, the Emerald version might come out on Switch. And I want to, like... I don't, it feels weird. I don't want to spoil myself on the game. I want to have a fresh experience with the Switch version. Also that came out last week was a massive Animal Crossing New Leaf update, which, seeing the game's how many years old, added Amiibo support, new features, so it's almost like a new game. Yes, and on the Weeb side of things, uh, for uh, fans of the anime Steins Gate, or the game Steins Gate for that, uh, for that matter, uh, it's, it's actually kind of a big deal uh, in gaming-wise, because... Uh, recently, especially this year, a lot of anime games like uh, visual novels and um, really just very Eastern games have actually been making it to Europe. Mm. Uh, mainly on the PS3 and PS4 and uh, Vita because that's where they live. Uh, in a more surprising move, uh, the other thing is Corpse Party, uh, a game that was on the PSP a while back, uh, was originally a PC game. It's a yeah. horror game, uh, very anime styled. Uh, it's coming out on the 3DS. Well, talking of the 3DS, in this week coming up, we've got coming out on Friday, Super Mario Maker for the Nintendo 3DS, which I won't get because I know they're bringing a version to the Switch. I think, which I think actually for gamers, this is going to impact a lot of the sales. I think a lot of them will p- perform poorly because the Switch versions come not. out. I do not, because you've got to remember, we are the very small minority of people that look at rumours online and research yeah. video games. Not but really- I, 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 for one, will not be getting Super Mario Maker for the Nintendo 3DS. I will be able to switch, but I do think that's a great game. I won't be getting it because you can't upload your own courses. You can download courses, but you can't upload. You can download courses from the Wii U version, but you can't upload courses. Okay. Uh, I, mean, also, I, I mean, that's not, not really why I just wanted to, you know... I'll briefly mention, we've also got Final Fantasy XV coming out, but uh, that... No, excuse me, stop, stop. Can you not talk about that uh, unknown game? Pick Cross 3. Free Round game. 2. Round 2. Uh, the much-wanted uh, sequel of Pick Cross 3D for the uh, nice puzzle game for the 3DS. And then finally, some sort of game called Final Fantasy XV. Don't know what that's about. That's out on the 29th. And yeah, that's all that's coming out uh, next week. Uh, anything you're <laughs> thinking of picking up from that, Alex? Well, I, I might get Final Fantasy XV. I might get it based on what I hear on the UK game on our website and our amazing review on Wednesday. Amazing depending on what they yeah, depending yeah, just, on what they say. I'm gonna check out the review of uh, of what of what uh, Jamie and Alex think about it um, yeah. on Thursday. Then I, I think actually though, our review would be quite interesting, especially from someone who's played it before and someone who's never played it before. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, last part of the uh, thing is just to mention, uh, remind you once more that there is a podcast, live podcast, coming out uh, Thursday, Thursday for the Game Awards, and there is the 24 hours or 48 hours, with, depending on how much time we actually get around to playing with it, uh, Final Fantasy 15 that will tell you if you should buy the game or not. Yeah, I'll I'm be out. tell you from gut impressions and uh, yes. I've heard from people that already own the game, it's a solid yes, buy the game. <laughs> I mean, that Final Fantasy review will be coming out either Wednesday or Thursday um, afternoon, depending on how long we think we need of it. Yeah, and we will be looking at the um, storyline, the mechanics, 
um, how it runs on PS4, how it runs on Xbox One. Maybe Alex can um, borrow his friend's PS4 Pro and tell me if uh, how it runs he, on. Um, he, he doesn't. Under, he doesn't understand Final Fantasy. Runs on the Pro. Well, yeah, but you can run it on his, can't you? Choo, 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 you'd, have, you'd have to buy the Pro version. That's the whole point of the Pro. Anyway, yeah. so that's all we have uh, time for today. And I say that after the blabbering on for about an hour. Uh, this is a weekly po- uh, weekly podcast. Uh, hopefully, in the future, there will be some sort of visual stimulation. I think, yeah, the first week we just wanted to basically try out the basics. Um, we hope you have more people joining us next week. Um, yeah, we wanted basically this week's episode just really just get into the groove of things. Yeah. Like you might have noticed, we're a bit sp- sp- sporadic and yes, lack of it did crash like three times. It has crashed a few times as well. So uh, if it does seem like we're talking about something that. <laughs> We are assuming that we've heard of before, because uh, we said it earlier on, it could just be that we lost the uh, the audio file, but I'm using Fraps, in case anyone wants to uh, start their own podcast. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, that's as, all we have really as you for end this. every podcast with, Nintendo, give us free stuff. Lots of free stuff, Nintendo. Lots of free stuff. To be fair, I read on, saw on Reddit the other day that um, Rick and Morty clip where they were selling $99 um, 2DSs, 3DSs, they were like, we could buy a flip these for two hundred ninety nine each, and we all get to keep a Nintendo 3DS. <laughs> I love that clip. That's the best gaming clip ever. But yeah, um, we'll catch you Wednesday, and we'll catch see, see you all again you guys later. Our next review. Um, to remind you, this show, the main podcast, will be every Sunday, every I believe. Sunday, yeah. Yep. So all this information will also be available on the site in less rambly format where you can just read it and be like, oh, those are the dates for the uh, podcast. I yeah. have to sit through an hour-long podcast to find out when we're on. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, we hope you enjoy it. Give us for the nature of the first one. We hope we're going to improve over the coming weeks. We'd love to hear your feedback. But yeah, um, it's been the first weekly podcast. It was, very um, fun. It was fun. Did you, did, you enjoy, did you enjoy talking about gaming news with me, uh, yeah, I want, with me Alex? Yeah, I want to go back and play Watch Dogs 2 now because it's a great game. It's a great game. <laughs> Yeah, remember Watch Dogs? Remember, remember Watch Dogs, indeed. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to cut this yeah. off here because we could literally just ramble on about how we're going to end the podcast for another hour. So, bye. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.